Now I'd like to take a look at examples of these different paths that the sympathetic fibres can take in the body. The branches of the sympathetic chain have somatic and visceral distribution. So somatic relates to the skin and the body wall, and visceral relates to the internal organs. So each spinal nerve has a contribution from at least one grey ramus, and this supplies a segmental skin area with these sympathetic fibres. This setup is like the first example we looked at in the previous tutorial, where the sympathetic fibre leaves the ventral horn and enters the sympathetic ganglion via the white ramus, and then forms a synapse with the postganglionic neuron, which leaves via the grey ramus and travels in the spinal nerve to supply the skin. So this kind of sympathetic innervation provides three functions. It provides vasomotor, pilomotor and pseudomotor function to the skin. So vasomotor means that it vasoconstricts the arterioles in the skin. Pilomotor means that it supplies the erector pili muscles. So this pilomotor function causes hairs to stand on end when they contract. So pseudomotor means it supplies sweat glands. So three functions there, pilomotor, vasomotor, pseudomotor. So you get this kind of configuration in which the skin is supplied by sympathetic fibres at every spinal level. Now next we'll take a look at the visceral distribution of the sympathetic nervous system. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Remember we talked about how the neuron could enter the sympathetic trunk and ascend or descend. This is the case for sympathetic innervation to the head and neck and also to lower abdominal and pelvic viscera through sacral splanchnic nerves. Head and neck sympathetic fibres arise from the ganglia in the sympathetic chain, and these fibres supply the skin and the eyes. So the neuron ascends into the cervical ganglia, and then the postganglionic fibre ascends along blood vessels that go to the head and neck. So it kind of hitchhikes along these blood vessels which supply the head and neck structures, so the vertebral arteries and the internal carotid arteries. So coming on to the thoracic viscera, these are supplied by sympathetic outflow from spinal regions T1 to T4. And the organs in the thorax are supplied by various plexuses. So the preganglionic neuron for the thoracic organs enter the sympathetic ganglion. And instead of leaving by the grey ramus and along the spinal nerve like the somatic supply, they leave in their own nerve. Remember that autonomic nerves that take off on their own like this, without travelling in a spinal nerve, are known as splanchnic nerves. So these nerves supply the heart and the lungs and are therefore known as cardiopulmonary splanchnic nerves. It is important to note that these splanchnic nerves are postsynaptic. So the fibres arise after synapsing in the sympathetic ganglia. We will see in a moment how the abdominopelvic splanchnic nerves are preganglionic. These cardiopulmonary postsynaptic sympathetic fibres project by these splanchnic nerves to various plexuses and are then distributed to innervate their target organs. So you've got cardiac, pulmonary and esophageal plexuses. Now we will take a look at the case where the preganglionic fibre doesn't synapse in the sympathetic trunk at all. Instead it passes straight through it and forms a synapse in a peripheral ganglion. Again, these autonomic neurons are not travelling in spinal nerves, so they are known as splanchnic nerves. These splanchnic nerves supply the abdominal and pelvic viscera and are known as abdominopelvic splanchnic nerves. They project a ganglia which are located in front of the vertebra, around the various branches of the aorta. You've got the celiac ganglia, the superior and inferior mesenteric ganglia, the aorticorenal ganglia, and the superior and inferior hypogastric ganglia. And you'll also hear these referred to as plexuses. So in terms of the splanchnic nerves, the abdominopelvic splanchnic nerves, you've got the thoracic splanchnics, the lumbar splanchnics, and the sacral splanchnics. Pelvic splanchnics are part of the parasympathetic nervous system. An easy way to remember that is sacral, sympathetic, pelvic, parasympathetic. Now coming back to the thoracic splanchnics, these are divided into the greater, the lesser, and the least. The greater thoracic splanchnic nerve arises from T5 to T9, and it synapses in the celiac ganglion. The lesser thoracic splanchnic arises from T10 to T11, and this synapses in the superior mesenteric and the aorticorenal ganglia. The least splanchnic nerve arises from T12 and synapses in the aorticorenal ganglia. 
In terms of the lumbar and sacral splanchnics, the lumbar projects to the inferior mesenteric ganglion and the sacral splanchnics project to the inferior hypogastric plexus. So there's actually a lot of intermingling of these fibres and plexuses and there's a degree of variability and different textbooks will say different things but this is just to give you a rough idea of how the sympathetic distribution is set up.